got the part. <laughs> After she finished shooting the movie, Rodgers and Hammerstein sent her to Paris to do a stage production of Oklahoma, and they cast this young actor by the name of Jack Cassidy to play opposite her. And this is where my parents met and fell in love. And three weeks into that production, my dad took my mom to the Eiffel Tower, and he proposed. And that would be the end of that perfect story. <laughs> Had my dad not been married at the time. <laughs> Jack Cassidy. So we're all family now, right? We lost an irreplaceable member of our family just a few years ago, my brother David. Yeah. yeah, I can't overstate the impact David had on my life. He was the brother from another mother who would come to my house on the weekends and share my room. He would not sleep in the upper bunk, and he would smuggle in these transistor radios for the very old people in the audience. You know. uh, and we would sing along with AM radio, 93KHJ. We'd sing all night long to these tunes on Boss Radio. And David would tell me these hysterical stories of our dad, because David was eight years older than I. And uh, we just laughed like crazy. David is the guy who taught me how to drive a car when I was nine. <laughs> He's also the first person to talk to me about girls. And that's the end of that sentence. When David ended up on the Partridge family, this was insane. Everything got surreal because suddenly, I mean, I knew my mother was famous. She had an Academy Award in our living room. But David was just David. He's the guy from the bunk in my room. And suddenly he's like the biggest star in the world. And this scared me. It scared me for him. If we're lucky, our siblings are the only ones we get to take this whole ride with. It's not our parents, it's not our kids. It's our brothers and sisters. I cherish my two younger brothers, Patrick and Ryan, and there's not a day goes by where I don't think about David, especially doing this. Toward the end of his life, when he was facing so many health challenges, it became increasingly difficult to connect with him. Too many pills, too much alcohol, had taken him away from us. But fortunately, in his last days, David came back to his family. And we were laughing again and singing again. This is a song he used to do with the Partridge family. Will there come a day when you and I can say we can finally see each other? Will there come a time we can find the time to reach out for one another? We've been traveling in circles such a long, long time Trying to say hello And we could just let it ride But you're someone that I'd like to get to know I'll meet you halfway That's better than no way to get it together And if there's some way I know that someday We just might work it out forever Time David and I ever worked together as actors. We 
was in a Broadway show called Blood Brothers. Final song is this powerful anthem we sang with Petula Clark. It was about love, and loss, and ultimately acceptance. Kathleen, if you'll cover for Petula, I'll do my best to cover for David. Tell me it's not true. Say it's just a story. Something on the news. Tell me it's not true. It's here before me. Say it's just a dream. Say it's just a scene from an old movie when years ago. From an old movie with Marilyn Monroe. Tell Here. 
So I didn't do any songs from Wasp, Todd, but when we, when we get the band back together, we did. Um, Deal! Okay. Um, one step at a time. Just getting used to this. And I have a day job that's, that's quite good. Uh, uh, there is an actor here who did a show here called Lost. His name is Ian Cusack. And you may know there's a many other shows. Somewhere. Somewhere. There. Oh, there he is. Hit table. Hit table straight ahead. Anybody can hear. I don't know. Head table. Um, Head bench. And finally, um, in 1978, the last time I played here, I landed at the airport with my best friend, who was always in my band, and we left the plane and went into a chopper which flew us over Waikiki where there were hundreds of kids spelling my name with their bodies <laughs> in the sand. And if that wasn't surreal enough, we landed in Diamond Head. And then we went on to do the show at the Blaisdell Arena, and and uh, this guy was with me at that show and every other show before, and would be at this show except that he has a big life doing another job himself. Uh, but he has been my closest friend since I was 14, and he's here tonight. I'm thrilled. His name is David Jolliffe. And for those of you who remember, uh, he, was on that. he was also on that. He had a big red afro. Yeah. Not only does he not have a big red outro, he has hardly has any anything. Uh, hey, 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 hey. Love you guys. Sorry. 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 Um, anyway, I'm going to sing a, a hit song, a big hit song for you now. And if those of you uh, know the words, please sing along because it's just me alone at the piano, and that's not how it was recorded. Uh, and if you don't know the song, this would be a good time to go to the bathroom. <laughs> I love you too. <laughs> May all your journeys be kissed by the magic of a midnight sky. Yeah.
rugged road the roads let us here and tonight we rise to tell our story and take our stand kick off our shoes on the baby grand we'll tear up to the dawn scream that you're on the road Oh, it's 